Okay, we are recording. Great, thank you. And we'll call to order tonight's Finance and Operations Committee meeting on Tuesday, October 27th at 6 p.m. And we'll head right into our financial report. Matt. Thanks, Lou. I'm going to start with the Word document. This is our commentary as of 1023. The fifth bullet under summary, our current report forecast is at 363,144 under budget. This is an increase from about 238,000 last period. And I'll go through some of the items that are driving that increase from our September financials. Uh, under salaries, we have the potential savings of 275 due to lower cost new hires and unpaid FMLA. This was at 250 last period. So we had a slight increase just based on our assessment and our projection through year end. Under benefits, we have the 10,000 with the unemployment insurance. That was the same as the prior reporting period. And we have a new item here, the employee education reimbursement of 20,000. This is our projected savings. We always budget what the maximum um, union obligation is about 55,000. But historically we've spent about 30,000. So we're gonna build in this savings just based on the current situation in the fiscal year. Under other purchase services, we have the unbudgeted expenditures of 37,000 for a technical school route. Again, we reported this last period, we've just had a, a new route to one of the state tech schools based on enrollment that we had not budgeted back in early winter. And then our potential savings, we have out of district sped transportation, about $50,000. This is a new item for the October period. And this is based on the actual billing from our contractor. We're not paying for those days that there is no transportation. A lot of our outplaced placement facilities are in the hybrid model. So the students are not going five days a week. We have uh, savings from regular ed and special education field trips, 20,000 and 5,000 respectively. Obviously with the situation in Weathersfield and throughout the country, we're not going out to remote locations for educational field trips. And we also have a small amount realized savings with the student accident insurance, just under $5,000. We budgeted historically uh, based on what we paid in the past and this year it just came slightly under budget. So we're in good shape there. So again, 363,000 total under budget at this time. And we do not have our full scope of outplacement tuition or magnet tuition that usually occurs sometime around Thanksgiving, maybe even into December with this year. And then we'll have a better understanding of our total savings. I think we're gonna increase that 363 slightly. And then we'll just monitor throughout what happens with the staffing and our other line items. So short and succinct this time, again, we're early in the fiscal year, so there's not too much to report on as far as the, the detail, but these are the, the big ticket items. Do we have a, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to ask the question only because my fear is that people will think that that somehow is driving any sort of decision, but is there sort of a model as far as you know when we go back versus being hybrid and what that does budget wise like if we stretch that out i would think some of the items that could drive the savings a little lower could be the substitute line we saw last year with our closure for an extended period that we had significant savings and also in all of our supply accounts our textbook accounts so it all depends on what kind of purchases we need. As far as PPE and those items, we do have two state grants that are covering the majority of those expenditures. So I don't see that as being an, an issue with our operating budget. Yeah, I think, Lou, it's, it's kind of tough to quantify also because, you know, when you do a full reopen, you have the potential of, you know, with more kids in the building, you have the potential for a higher number of quarantines. You also have a potential for actually having to close the building. Uh, for 14 days and go full remote. That's a potential. So there you're getting into, you know, energy costs, although that's not on our side anymore. That's a potential change. As Matt mentioned, you have the substitute costs. 
Um, again, we don't know, like this evening, you've got a um, item before you, action item for an extension of a leave. Um, at this point in time, we don't have any additional leaves. Uh, I don't know if a full reopening is going to shift that. I know in some districts, they've seen that happen where they've shifted to full reopening and they've seen an increase in the number of uh, staff leaves that's, that have uh, resulted. So um, not easy to quantify, but definitely a potential. Other questions? Yeah, I have one. Um, Matt, the one about, I did put an exclamation mark next to it, that technical mm -hmm. school bus route. Yeah. Could you explain that again? So I'd have to look at our budget detail, but I believe we had routes budgeted for Vinyl, Cheney, and maybe Prince Tech. And then we had an additional school that required a full bus just based on enrollment. We, a few years ago, we okay. decided that we were only going to fund the state um, mandate for student transportation to a technical school, which is $6,000 per year per student. And we fund a full van or bus when we hit about five or six students. And that's where we are with the, with this additional route. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any other business? Matt, just wanted to uh, bring up the question with regard to other business. Our uh, grants, you mentioned that we have the, the CARES Act and the COVID-19 uh, relief funding. I understand that those uh, grants have both been submitted. Am I correct? Correct. And the CARES funding has been approved and we have incurred some expenditures on that. It also expires in June of 2022. The coronavirus relief funding expires in December of 2020, and that has not been approved. I don't see any concerns with our grant application that we submitted, and those are separate items that are not in the CARES funding. So we'll expend through that this fiscal or this calendar year, and then most of the CARES money we'll use as needed, and then see if we can carry some over into the next fiscal year. And we can also talk about the lunch program. Initially, we had posted that the free breakfast and lunch for all Wethersfield residents 18 and under was effective on September 9th and going through December 31st or until funding, federal funding expired. And now that's been extended through the end of the school year, fiscal year, so June of 2021. And we, we did post updates through, I believe the website and Facebook. Do we save money with that since we're not, and do we make money, save money on that? Lose money? Uh, I, it's interesting. Well, we're losing money on a la carte because we're only serving cookies at the high school level at this point. We may expand to the middle school. I know in September we lost about $30,000 in a la carte revenue, but with the free meals for all students, we do get federal reimbursement for every meal that we claim. Okay. So we'll most likely see an increase in that type of revenue, but the a la carte sales are going to decrease dramatically. And have our numbers as far as the lunch pickups remained sort of the same since the beginning of this beginning of the school year? They've increased slightly. They're certainly not at the level we would like. And we also started with the weekend meals as well. So on Friday, we're doing the service for the Saturday and Sunday. I, I think we need to just work on our communication a little bit as well to get the word out that this is available. So we're, and are we're the numbers, oh, sorry, Lou. are the numbers much lower than the end of last year? They are lower than when we had the initial COVID shutdown. Do you, Michael, do we get numbers about number of students who are, maybe we don't, but like through the Y program, like I'm thinking those, those kids obviously are, are not getting lunches through this program. So that would knock that number down. Yeah, I think Lou, the last uh, count that I had in terms of the number of students in the Y program was approximately 13. Um, I'm meeting with the folks from the Y program again tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So I'll ask for an update. 
Um, we had a total of, I want to say it was 30 seats available um, through that child care program. And uh, I think 13, 14 has been the number. And Matt, didn't they have access to that? Weren't we talking about delivering meals over to the Y program? Yeah. And when I heard from the program coordinator director, I, I don't think there was any interest in those students participating in the program. Okay. But, but we did make it available. I have, I have one last, it's, it's a comment question. Um, as we go through this crazy year that we've gone through, a roller coaster ride we're on with COVID, Matt, are you finding any um, financial model that you can create as it goes on? Or that we can recreate next year? Because they're saying 21 and 22 may be just as bad. <laughs> I, you know, there's there's so many variables that change month to month, and it's it's almost like when we look at our regular operating budget, it's going to be the the main drivers. We're going to look at salary and benefits, outplacement, tuition, and transportation. Those are where the major expenditures are. Certainly, supplies and those consumables may decrease just based on whether it's a hybrid model or it's a full remote model. But it's it's difficult to project. I, I, I just think of how we ever going to put a budget together for next year. Um, that actually is where all that came from. Yeah, and I, I was going to talk about that too, because I know we want to start on a similar timeline to last year, but I, I don't know. We can certainly put together a, a rough draft for December, but it's, it's really going to change week to week, month to month. You guys read my mind. I was coming up next. <laughs> it is that time of year is it not yeah i've already started talking with leadership on the council about directions direction and where their thoughts are but they're kind of where we are it's, a, it's a tough year to do it mm. yeah we we had an insurance committee meeting in september and there was no discussion of potential increase at this point just too premature in the year but i'm thinking if we're at 360 to 400,000 in potential savings in October and that increases that hopefully we can use similar model to last year where whatever increase we may need to cover salary and benefits we can use the current year savings to help with that insurance cost. All right, we'll work on getting at least salary and benefits right around the Thanksgiving break, maybe a little bit after that, similar to last year. And just reminds that I would like to at some point talk about pay for play and make sure that we don't forget about that. Yeah, and I, that's another one of those, uh, Lou, with regard to uh, winter sports. Right now, we're not completely sure what's going to happen with winter sports. Um, I heard today uh, at the DPH meeting that DPH is going to be meeting with CIAC. Um, some of our winter sports are considered high risk, um, so it's going to be interesting to see what uh, the plan is for the likes of, say, wrestling, um, ice hockey, as we've seen a lot of tournaments result in uh, positive cases, uh, boys and girls basketball. And then the other one that's going to be interesting, too, is um, the issue of indoor track. Where, where exactly would our indoor track team participate? Most colleges and universities are not accepting large groups. And I know my colleague, I think over in Glastonbury has the facility, but obviously uh, is not going to be offering that up for, you know, a lot of teams to come in. So um, that remains to be seen what we're going to get out of that. Great. Anything else from anyone? Ken, no questions? No, I'm just listening and um, hoping for good news down the road. I'm going to stay optimistic. <laughs> Great. And I guess yeah, I think the, uh, the, two, the two grants that we have received are really helping out this year. And so I will ask that, and you started to go over that, Matt. So, Lou, I will ask a question. Do we <laughs> anticipate spending most of that? Uh, I know you talked about maybe carrying over some of the CARES grant. Um, are we using a lot of that for PPE equipment? So because we had that application prior to the coronavirus relief funding, we have to expend the, 
whatever PPE we budgeted in that before we can purchase additional PPE through the coronavirus, but we do have separate items. They're, they're completely different and it's not going to be an issue with the state. So with the coronavirus, it's a, just over $200,000 grant that's going to cover PPE, some transportation costs that will be expended by the end of the calendar year. And then with the CARES Act, which is about $255,000, most likely will go through a good portion of the PPE allocation, maybe $50,000, $60,000. And then we're gonna focus on the remaining balance through the second part of this school year and then determine what we can carry over into the next fiscal year. Got it, thank you. Michael, I was gonna ask this question later tonight, but I'll ask it now and then you can tell me that it's better off for the big meeting. It's about sort of and I can wait, the cohorting and all that good stuff and today's news. Um, would you rather I wait till tonight, later? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, because I'm gonna talk a little bit about the reopening plan tonight during communication. So that may be a, a certainly a good question to ask. So okay. we've had some good experience with cohorting and some success, especially at the elementary level. So yeah, right. be happy to answer any questions you have tonight about that. Great. All right, anything else? Nothing, all right, then we can move to adjourn. Sounds good. Okay. So we'll see you, everyone. See you, see you guys shortly. Bye. Bye, guys. I'll see you soon. <laughs>